Hello there and welcome to Belfast High School History on YouTube. This little video is going to look at the causes of the Korean War. The Korean War is one of the major conflicts of the Cold War and it's the first proxy conflict, uh, the first hot war uh, between East and West. Now proxy conflict basically means that both sides don't face each other directly but both are involved in some way. So let's have a look and see um, about Korea first and then look at the causes directly. So Korea, you can see on the right-hand side here, highly strategic. So you've got the uh, country split um, between North and South. But above Korea, you can see uh, China, the People's Republic of China, which becomes communist in 1949. Uh, above that, you can see the Soviet Union, with all its might and power. And for the Western side, well, you can see how, uh, how much of a front line it actually is, because uh, below South Korea, you can actually see there's Japan. And you have the Philippines as well, not far below that. Um, so this is a highly strategic area of the world. It's also something that has repercussions all the way to the present day with uh, Kim Jong-un in power, uh, with uh, lots of nuclear threats. And this war itself still resonates through history. Um, it's actually not a, a formal peace settlement even signed to this present day. So let's have a look at the, the first cause, a bit of background, but first cause as well. So Japan had occupied Korea uh, during World War II, the whole way through World War II, uh, a very brutal uh, time for the Korean people. Uh, at the end of World War II, well, uh, from the north, the Soviet Union pushed down, moved the Japanese out. And from the south, the American forces were doing exactly the same. And it was agreed that what they would do is split the country in half along the 38th parallel of latitude until a more permanent solution could be found after World War II. So this is what happened. The first real cause here is this North-South rivalry and ambition. In the North, you had a, a communist state backed by the USSR and led by a man called Kim Il-sung. So Kim Il-sung. In the South, you had um, South Korea being capitalist. It's not democratic now, but it's capitalist. And of course, it's backed by the United States of America. Uh, so it's not democratic at all, okay, at that stage. It's led by Syngman Rhee, who was quite a corrupt politician um, and not particularly popular in the South. On the 25th of June, 1950, Kim Il-sung took a gamble backed by Stalin in the Soviet Union and Mao Zedong in China, and took that gamble to invade the South, believing that they could push the Western forces, the Southern forces, um, completely out and take over all of Korea. This, of course, creates a, a great deal of hostility uh, across the Western world. The invasion creates this huge worry, and the first worry they have is this idea about the domino theory. This is the idea that if South Korea fell to communism, then other countries across the world would rapidly follow. And the United States is particularly worried, if you remember back to that map, um, and you can see it on the right-hand side here, they're particularly worried about Japan and the Philippines in particular. So there's also this idea of containment. So you know this from the previous videos. So linked to this domino theory is the United States' commitment to the policy of uh, the Truman Doctrine and containment itself. Uh, the invasion certainly seemed to challenge the idea uh, of containment, and Truman was determined to stand by his policy. Well, what is containment again? Well, it's a policy that the United States would provide political, military, and economic aid to countries under the threat of communist influence in order to prevent the expansion of communism itself. <clears throat> so the United States actually begins to actually uh, make this a policy a, a, go even further in April 1950 because it actually moves uh, to a policy of a rollback, trying to roll back communist control from certain areas. So there's also Cold War politics features in this as well. So um, Cold War politics creates the reasons for United States involvement in Korea following the invasion. The Americans looked at uh, the invasion and clearly felt that Stalin is behind this. There's no way Kim Il-sung would actually invade the South without the backing of powerful supporters. And certainly Stalin was meant to be one of those supporters. China, the world's most populous country, uh, had really shocked America and shocked the world when it actually became communist in 1949 after years of civil war. Mao Zedong managed to um, 
become victorious there and take over the most populous country in the world. Uh, clearly um, a major development in the Cold War. What made things worse as well was by 1949, the Soviet Union had actually had a successful detonation of their own atomic bomb. Clearly for America, the stakes were being raised and Korea features into this Cold War politics. And fifthly and finally, it's opportunity for the United States of America. Timing is crucial here. The USSR and China were actually boycotting the United Nations at this time over the issue of Taiwan. Um, and this allowed the United States the chance to get United Nations support for intervention in Korea. The USSR does have a veto, it has a veto to stop things, I guess, but because it's not in the United Nations at that stage, um, because of the boycott, it cannot do that. So it gives the United States the opportunity to have the moral high ground by giving UN support 